hello friends you may recall uh, we discussed uh, you know at certain point of time about uh, ambient air quality modeling like gaussian dispersion model and so on today we will discuss about indoor air quality modeling how do we model the indoor air quality because uh, just uh, before this lecture we have already discussed about various sources of the indoor air pollution and then exposure assessment uh, through monitoring sampling of the indoor air quality or indoor air pollution so today we will discuss how to model or simulate the indoor air quality this will uh, include the uh, introductory part and then what are the modeling and simulation how do we relate uh, these modeling uh, issues and simulation aspects of uh, mathematical uh, uh, modeling uh, when we do about the indoor air pollution then indoor air quality related models uh, very uh, you know simple models those those kind of models we will discuss and uh, advantages of the modeling means uh, with respect to like monitoring or sampling the numerical modeling of air uh, flow indoor air flow we will uh, look into then computational fluid dynamics related important aspects which are uh, uh, you know used for indoor air flow or modeling so that we we will discuss then uh, simple modeling tools or techniques like uh, analytical tools and advection model or box model which are quite popular uh, for modeling indoor air quality so that we will uh, touch and later we we will discuss on air quality modeling programs or tools which are uh, already developed by us epa like uh, you know simulation tool kit for indoor air quality and inhalation exposure that is known as iaqx and indoor uh, semi volatile organic compounds iswoc version 1.0 and then third one is parameters or uh, params program these three popular uh, tools or easy to handle tools we will discuss which take care of air quality modeling uh, in indoor environments and then we will conclude so when we talk about uh, you know introductory part of indoor air pollution modeling basically uh, you know whatever uh, sources are there or sinks are there if we do not consider them to uh, simulate or model then it is difficult to find out how much concentration will be at a particular place and moreover if we go for sampling like each and every corner in the indoor environment then it needs lot of resources and uh, lot of time so better you know we have uh, optimum number of samples and based on the sample data we can have certain uh, modeling techniques which can be used for uh, you know taking uh, these uh, results further for uh, let us say health risk assessment etc but before that we need to do the air quality modeling of the indoor environment only then we would be able to use that further in health risk assessment uh, and those 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 sort of activities when we talk about modeling and simulation so modeling as you know it is nothing but the set of equations which represent the uh, reality of whatever uh, thing we want to model and there may be different modeling techniques like statistical uh, models which are used based on certain uh, you know input output re output relationship without giving much importance to physico chemical interactions or processes but there are other modeling techniques like deterministic uh, uh, models which take care of physical and chemical phenomena and they solve those uh, you know physico chemical characteristic related equations then they get the result but they are right re like resource consuming or time consuming and it also needs uh, skilled manpower to handle those kind of models and whenever we process you know using any sort of model whether it is a uh, statistical model or deterministic model whenever we are using a model to process the data and we are analyzing the behavior of uh, any real life system then we call it as a simulation we are doing a simulation so whatever whether it is in ambient air or indoor air or any kind of environment we are talking about and we are trying to use certain model to represent that uh, those processes which uh, which are related to that environment whether of indoor or outdoor so we are basically simulating that particular environment of different aspects of that environment now if we talk about the uh, indoor air quality models uh, which have been uh, you know developed uh, to predict or to estimate indoor air pollutant concentrations and then uh, after that dosage you can say because dose function is important for uh, 
exposure assessment and risk assessment. So, basically uh, you know three functional parameters are important to model indoor air environment like indoor air pollutant sources and sinks we should know about what are the different sources of those indoor air pollutants and what are sinks also because some uh, portions will be like uh, absorbed or adsorbed those kind of sinking related phenomena will also be there right. Then outdoor air pollutant concentration we should also know the reason is because outdoor air pollution also come to the indoor environment through like windows through other uh, doors whenever we open. So, the concentration outside will also influence the indoor environment like this outdoor air can enter into the inside of the house. So, we need to know how much ambient air concentration is there and also the indoor outdoor air exchange rates because they will interact indoor environment and outdoor environment they will interact whenever like door is opened, window is opened or any other system we are using. So, those air exchange rates we should know about. Now, like uh, we know uh, this uh, you know system which is described uh, in the form of uh, developing or using an indoor air quality model or indoor air pollution model. So, uh, you know we need to begin with, uh, with certain principles and uh, the mass balance uh, concerning those pollutants which are of our interest in the indoor environment basically we look into that. So, you might have heard about like mass uh, uh, conservation or energy conservation. So, from that perspective mass balance related uh, equations we use in this particular indoor air quality modeling efforts. And what are the advantages? Why do we do this uh, indoor air quality modeling? Although we have touched upon like because we cannot go for uh, monitoring or sampling each and every corner of the environment and it, it, it needs lot of resources. So, one advantage is that whenever uh, you have a valid model, so you can run it and uh, get the concentration with respect to different scenarios, right. So, it provides basically the way or understanding to link the sources and sinks and the building factors, building factors like uh, which influences the air exchange rate as I said like outdoor environment and indoor environment are uh, interacting through those windows and doors. So, those factors, building factors they influence. So, these uh, kind of parameters or variables are linked uh, through that uh, modeling effort. Then also it is used for investigating many uh, IAQ or indoor air quality related problems without any additional expenses uh, which are required for field experiment let us say. So, we can avoid field experiment, we can just create a scenario and with respect to that scenario we can get or predict certain concentrations and we can know that this will be the effect of the changes if you want to make in the indoor environment. Suppose we want to uh, you know go for some other energy uh, system like heating system in the indoor environment whether it will it will influence the air quality or not right or we are going uh, for another kind of furniture and uh, you know furnitures also have certain uh, certain uh, sources of uh, these VOCs etc. So, those variables can be there and those variables can easily be simulated in the modeling technique. They also provide information about the factors which are very important and they determine the indoor environment related issues whether uh, not only the uh, like air quality is the final result, but before that there are many variable factors. So, those variable factors can easily be uh, considered in the indoor environment indoor air quality modeling. When we talk about like numerical modeling of indoor air flow because there are several techniques and one of those uh, you know techniques is numerical modeling. In recent years basically uh, you know extensive activities and research and development have been done through computational fluid dynamic related processes or software CFD which is called which is you might have heard about this. So, these are the special programs for like uh, room air uh, uh, flow movement or contaminant transport uh, applications within those indoor environment. And these investigations they can range from like prediction of uh, air jet diffusion or air velocity or temperature distribution in the rooms or humidity related uh, issues or contamination you know diffusion dispersion within those enclosures or any smoke spread inside the buildings. So, all those kind of issues can be tackled by CFD techniques basically. 
So, this CFD is a computational technique or tool you can say which produces uh, quantitative predictions of uh, fluid flow uh, uh, like uh, uh, through conservation laws like conservation of mass as I just said or momentum conservation of momentum or conservation of energy. So, those basic principles are used for this particular CFD technique. So, they govern fluid motion basically. So, these are the principles which are used. So, you can say that CFD is a tool for analyzing air fluid uh, or air flow problems right and it is used uh, you know it can provide uh, uh, when it is used correctly then it can provide useful inf information very quickly and with minimum uh, resources basically just you have computer and you can run that model and you can get the results. And it can use uh, you know different methods or procedures like uh, finite difference method or finite volume method or finite element method those kind of uh, popular techniques can be used for CFD models. Then there are other models which are of very simple nature. So, these simple modeling techniques can also be used for indoor air quality modeling and they can be like uh, related to uh, analytical tools or advection model or box model. So, we will see what is those uh, you know tools. When we talk about analytical tools basically uh, they are uh, you know uh, they are based on two concepts when we develop the simple models uh, for indoor air quality calculations or estimations. So, one is like well mixed model and other one is partially uh, mixed uh, ventilation model. In well mixed model basically we assume that concentration is uniformly distributed because it is mixed very well in, in that enclosure or in that indoor environment. In partially mixed model basically the concentration is non-uniform. It can vary from one point to another right because of poor mixing or ventilation related issues. But in some situations you know uh, there may be kind of mix of the things and it is relatively safe to assume well mixed uh, conditions uh, for simplification purpose for uh, you know approximation purpose so that you can quickly uh, calculate uh, the needed parameters. So, this type of assumptions leads to the use of simple analytical models or tools. Further you know there are certain assumptions like we assume that an enclosure or that indoor environment exists in which the concentration is considered to be especially uniform as I said when we assume that it is uniform then we assume that at each point the concentration is same. But the mass concentration at time t 0 it is c 0 like uh, then at the point uh, like at the time t it is c t. So, maybe c air which is uh, the air with contaminant out, out outdoor air if it is entering or not only in the outdoor, but within the indoor environment also if we are assuming certain cubes or certain small uh, enclosures. So, from one enclosure to another air movement may be there. So, this sea air which is uh, with certain contaminant if it is entering into this particular uh, enclosure then it can have uh, you know this uh, uh, volumetric flow rate q in right and the concentration it can have c in right. Uh, or uh, at the time t 0 if we assume c 0 then at time t the concentration may be c t and that you know uh, c t can be like c air when it is uniformly distributed in this enclosure and that same concentration will go out because every corner every point has the uh, uniform concentration in that particular space. When we talk about like equations there are several equations, but for the sake of information I give you this uh, very uh, only one um, uh, conservation of mass related equation which is used for uh, you know estimating the concentrations and solving this uh, these equations. So, where these parameters are concentration then uh, this contaminant uh, rate uh, which is being emitted uh, V is the velocity and then this volumetric uh, parameter is there then uh, control volumes uh, factor can be there and control surface related factor can be there. So, these equations are solved by the model and uh, they can estimate the concentrations ultimately. Well, then other model is advection model, advection you know horizontal movement as you know convection is vertical movement, advection is horizontal movement. In many times like source exists that is moving within a confined space like in a tunnel train is moving ok or within the you know uh, household activities people are doing and they are also moving like somebody is smoking and uh, moving in the corridor. So, those kind of moving 
uh, source is may exist. So, it is a horizontal movement. So, advection models are used to uh, you know simulate or model uh, the effect of those sources and to know what would be the concentration at the point of interest. So, we see all those parameters of course, like volume approach is used, uh, control volume approach is used and then uh, these uh, ventilation related uh, parameters are also used. You can see in this particular figure, uh, it, it is shown very uh, nicely that uh, you know this A d x is volume having length of element as d x, you know this, this much of slice of the d x and area is uh, you can have this area of this uh, tunnel where this uh, engine or train is moving, u is the velocity. So, you can use uh, those equations and you can further solve it to get the concentration. Then advection model uh, uses uh, all kind of uh, you know those equations, but ultimately this is the final equation which is used for estimating the concentrations where different parameters are there like uh, contaminant deposited in tunnel walls C m, C is the concentration of the contaminant which is uh, you know like C x at the x distance you can see here uh, this is the uh, you know this L is the length of the tunnel and x wherever point you are uh, you know denoting the x distance. So, that is used in this uh, equation. Then uh, u is the velocity of air inside the tunnel u 0 denotes the air at the entrance of the tunnel basically x is the distance from a starting of tunnel at the point where we want to estimate the concentration. So, all these parameters are basically used to estimate the concentration through the advection model. Next is the box model and this box model is basically uh, you know uh, uh, is used when non uniform uh, conditions are there when concentration is uh, existing in a non uniform way which is a reality basically uh, uniform concentration we assume uh, in certain uh, enclosures but uh, if larger uh, you know enclosures or indoor environment is there it is not necessary that uniform concentration will be there of a particular pollutant so, basically box model is based on multi cell well mixed model means small cells are like if this is the box model creating. So, it can be divided into several cells and those cells can have different concentration of uniform uh, level. Okay. So, each cell can be termed as a uniform concentration related phenomena and then integration can be done at later stage. So, basically non-uniform non, non condition is existing, but that non-uniform condition can be divided into several uniform cells right. And this box model basically you know have uh, four types of mixing uh, which can occur in uh, those cells which we have divided for example, displacement. So, let us say if air is entering in that way and uh, you know it, it is coming and going outside this way. So, it is displacing basically. Okay. So, in coming air displaces the existing air which is in the enclosure or in the cell it, it goes out and then cavity formation can be there if short circuit is there like air is coming and it is going directly. So, here this is the cavity. So, this cavity can form and concentration may build up rather than flushing it out in displacement kind of phenomena the flushing of concentration of pollutants may be there, but in this kind of uh, you know condition or context the cavity formation can be there and concentration build up can be uh, over the period of time can be there and uh, recirculation of concentration may be there. right? And then there is this mixing like if uh, this air goes and travels a long distance and come back. So, uh, kind of mixing region or mixed region is produced and uniform concentration you can assume in this particular cell. Then there may be another way like piston where air is coming from this and air is going out of this. So, it is it's working like a piston and it is pushing out this air outside. So, several kind of combinations can be there which can be uh, catered or simulated uh, by box model basically. And this is the fundamental uh, you know equation uh, which is used for uh, estimating concentrations uh, based on you know several parameters like pollution emission rate and then the uh, you know area uh, this horizontal area uh, length into uh, width and uh, you can have the this h is the box height. So, box height basically when we are talking about uh, you know the mixing height within that enclosure. Okay, mixing height in ambient air is boundary layer height you know, but within the enclosure or within the indoor environment it can be again the some mixing height basically. Uh, but 
fundamental concept is same you we use box model in ambient air quality modeling also right then we come to air quality modeling programs which are uh, like ready made tools available because uh, us epa environmental protection agency has developed certain tools which can be used by people to uh, you know simulate uh, air in different uh, indoor environment and they can get uh, uh, you know easily those models are uh, handled or those programs are handled. So, like one program is simulation toolkit for indoor air quality and inhalation exposure IAQX. Another one is indoor semi uh, volatile organic compounds ISWOC. Then third one is parameters or params program version 1.1. Uh, it was earlier 1.0 as we <coughs> discussed and uh, this four indoor emission source modeling basically. So, these uh, you know programs are window based. So, user friendly and uh, anybody who knows simple computer uh, handling they can easily use those tools or models. In indoor air quality and inhalation exposure like IAQX model basically there are uh, different uh, stand alone programs or modules like five modules are there. One is like GPS. So, this uh, this file can be executed or this program or this module can be executed for the purpose of general purpose simulation program basically. When this VBX is related to VOCs, okay? so it models to predict the VOC emissions from solvent based indoor coating materials based on product formulation. Okay? This may be like uh, uh, furniture, this may be from walls etcetera. Then spill, uh, this uh, spill related module is there which uh, you know simulate the or which models for indoor solvent spills where you know some solvent has been spilled out then it can be modeled uh, because it will uh, give some VOCs etcetera or uh, then this is slab. So, this model uh, gives the VOC emissions from diffusion controlled homogeneous slabs such as new carpet backing. So, if carpet is there, new carpet is there, lot of you know uh, fumes may be there. So, this particular module can be used for that particular emissions. A model for indoor particulate matter is PM uh, related module. So, uh, if we uh, want to run a particular module uh, depending upon the requirement we can run otherwise we can run 5 modules if all these conditions are applicable. You can see this is the general appearance of that uh, particular tool. So, different buttons are there and because it is window based uh, you can just uh, you know press the button, you can uh, go through the menu bar and you can choose whatever possibilities are there. So, basically the next one is indoor semi volatile organic compounds ice walk. Okay, so, this is uh, you know 1.0 ice walk version is there and uh, this uh, basically uh, model the emissions and the its transportation or absorption or adsorption and distribution or dispersion of semi volatile organic compounds SVOCs in the indoor environment. And this program is capable of covering the functions of most commonly used models for indoor uh, semi volatile organic compounds and it can also provide the user with more flexibility than the other existing models. So, that way it is versatile you can say and it frees the user uh, from numerical computational computations which are quite resource intensive as well as it needs lot of uh, you know skilled manpower. So, that way it is quite easy to handle and it has versatility, but there are certain limitations also like uh, the current version of this program uh, is for a single air zone and a single uh, uh, semi volatile organic compound. So, it cannot uh, you know model uh, the mixture of different kind of uh, VOCs. Okay. The program does not support chemical reactions, so that way a very uh, simplified assumption is there. This program ignores the interactions between uh, you know settled dust and the surface uh, which the dust particles are in contact with. Uh, many indoor uh, you know pesticides are there uh, which emit SVOCs, so this program does not contain any mass transfer models for liquid application. So, these are limitations, but as you know even in Gaussian dispersion model when we talked about in ambient uh, air quality modeling there were several assumptions. So, that because there are so many uncertainties and complex things are there we cannot handle everything otherwise the model will be very uh, you know complex and uh, uh, very difficult to handle. So, it is fine if there are certain limitations, but if it is giving uh, good results, but you know other like uh, 
in this particular uh, model we had these uh, five modules. So, that way this is better model if you want to uh, model several kind of VOCs, particulate matters or spilled uh, over related uh, uh, issues. But uh, if you want to concentrate only on semi volatile organic compounds then this model is fine, but only limitations are there that because it handles single SVOC at a time. right? Then <coughs> it can be seen this general appearance again similar to other one window based model it is. So, you can just uh, use uh, these buttons and uh, you can uh, run the uh, model. The third one is parameters params uh, program version which is of 1.1 ok ISO work was of 1.0 and this is 1.1. Well, so these, uh, these this particularly program can be used to implement uh, you know methods for estimating the parameters in indoor emissions source models that is why it is known as parameters ok param uh, 1.1. And uh, the methods which fall in seven categories which are used in this particular program or tool are like properties of the indoor air right first order decay rate concern, uh, constants for several uh, uh, emissions can easily be handled right. Then gas phase liquid phase or overall uh, mass transfer uh, these coefficients can also be taken into account. Molar volume related the parameters then molecular diffusivity in air liquid or solid materials, solid air uh, partition coefficients, vapor pressure and volat uh, this volatility all these uh, things uh, are uh, you know taken into account with this software. Then users can benefit from this program in base uh, two fundamental ways. Uh, this can serve as a handy tool uh, you know by putting commonly used methods in one place and it can uh, save lot of time uh, because uh, TDS calculations are avoided uh, this uh, program uh, you know does all those calculations at the back end. But there are limitations again like earlier model also had limitations. This uh, you know users are reminded that the number of parameters that can be estimated uh, with this particular tool is only a fraction of the total number of parameters in the existing indoor source models. So, not all parameters are being handled, but important parameters are being included. And these methods uh, you know for particulate matter are not included in the current version. So, that is one limitation it can have other pollutants, but particulate matter related if you want to model then go for that IAQX that is fine. This is the you know general appearance again uh, all these uh, you know selected methods are given. So, anything you can choose as per the requirement and you can run the model. So, in conclusion we can say that the indoor air quality models uh, are very important uh, for predicting the pollutant concentrations uh, you know in terms of uh, especially uh, like from one point to another or as a function of time means over the period of time how this variation will be there with respect to the sources and with respect to the variation variation in uh, different influencing factors like temperature, humidity etcetera. And they are divided into three categories statistical or mass balance and computational fluid dynamics CFD models basically. Simple modeling techniques are also there which can include uh, analytical tools or advection model or box model as just we have discussed. And there are three very simple programs which have been developed by US EPA like IAQX, IASVOC and uh, these params ok. These are simple uh, tools which can be used by any computer savvy person. So, these software can help us uh, putting all those commonly used modeling techniques in one place and we can uh, you know avoid tedious calculations which are required in other complicated models. So, this is all for today I hope now you can appreciate why indoor air quality modeling is important, how it is carried out. So, these are the references based on which we have uh, presented this particular lecture. You can go through them at leisure and thank you, see you in the next lecture. Thanks again.